Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. Today, we've got a single release, a stupendous release, some that I, I know some of you have been waiting for for a few weeks for me to kind of get to and talk about. I just got done watching it last night. It's taken me like two weeks to get through it because it's a massive mammoth set. Of course, I'm talking about Frank Marino live at the Agora Theater. Okay, box set. So for those of you who are probably, I'm assuming if you're a Frank Marino fan, you know all about this. But if you're a Frank Marino fan and have no idea what I'm holding in my hand or what I'm talking about, uh, this is basically a like six-hour live performance recorded at the Agora Theater in Cleveland, Ohio back in 2009, right? Or was this 2010? I believe it was 2010. Um, and basically, Frank and his band got up on stage. It was like a whole day video shoot, whole day performance. For those of you who are, you know, lucky lucky enough to be there, I'm sure you will remember it for the rest of your life. Okay? And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful document of a fabulous, fabulous day that, uh, you know, must have been incredible because the performance that I witnessed on DVD and Blu-ray. So let's let's just break down what you get here. So first of all, you get this killer book. All right, nice thick book. It's like uh, almost two. It's 176 pages. Uh, half of it written by our good friend here at Sea of Tranquility, Ryan Sparks. Okay, who also lives up in Canada, knows Frank Marino personally, and he basically wrote wrote like a, a bio for Frank and Mahogany Rush. Okay, very well done. And then the second half of the book is from the man himself, Frank Marino, talking about his career and more importantly, what kind of transpired to put all this together. So to give you a little bit of history, so basically, you know, a number of years ago, you know, Frank hasn't toured a ton in the last like decade, decade and a half. But at some point he was introduced to a guy who owned a video production company, and he said, you know, Frank, it's like you're like one of those, the last of the classic classic rock guys from the glory days who doesn't have like a concert film on, you know, DVD or Blu-ray. And Frank's like, yeah, I know. It's like, but, you know, costs a lot of money to put those together, and yeah, just, you know, it, it hasn't been top of mind for me, whatever. So this guy said, you know what? And he said, I'd be, you know, very interested in doing that for you getting my crew in, you know, you pick where you want to play it, and we'll record the whole thing, whatever, and, you know, you know what, just because I believe in you and what you're doing, I'll do it for nothing, okay, and Frank was like, you know, Frank, being the guy that he is, is like, that's a, a wonderful offer, but I couldn't take you up on that, I mean, I'm not, you know, it's like, I'm not a charity case, it's like, you know, I, if I wanted to go have you do that, I would, I would want to pay you for it, and I'm just not in a position to do it right now, so, but thanks anyway, um, and apparently this guy kept kind of, you know, every so often reaching out to Frank saying, hey, that offer's still available, whatever, so finally, you know, a couple of years later, Frank decided, you know what, I kind of would like to do this, but I don't really have the money to kind of pay this guy and his team to do it. So we're going to do like kind of like a little low budget type thing. We'll grab a couple camera people, whatever. We'll play a show and what have you. And, uh, you know, we'll just kind of make it happen. We'll wing it, you know, whatever. Well, apparently the dude who had the production company, you know, kind of caught wind of that. And when it was time, you know, when the concert was, was booked at the Agora Theater, all right, Frank goes to show up, right? And that crew is there. The guy who's been talking to him for years who said, I'm going to do this for you, whatever, uh, basically, and Frank was like, you know, touched. He's like, well, can't say no to him now, right? So, so long story short, they what Frank had wanted to do was play like a ridiculous, I mean, there's like 50-something songs, right? Just like the rehearsals that must have went into this, crazy to think of, right? All sorts of great tracks from throughout his career. A bunch of covers, right? Got some Hendrix covers. All right, all sorts of great stuff. Roughly six hours worth of, uh, you know, live action. All right. All professionally shot and recorded, okay, for a wonderful release like this. Okay. The performances are killer. All right. Before I get into that, though, let me finish telling the story. So, 
as it turns out, like when they when they were going through sound checks and all that kind of stuff before the show actually started, you know, Frank Frank has this like recording system that he's been using for years that never had an issue with. But for some reason, as he's like checking stuff out and they're you know doing all the technical stuff behind the scenes before they're actually before it's actually showtime, you know, Frank's got this nagging premonition that something's not working right. Okay. But he's like, but you know, I've had this equipment for years. It's always worked for me. You know, I'm going to trust it. And But something just doesn't seem right. Anyway, they go, they play the show, they film it, record it the whole nine yards. It goes great. The people in attendance loving every minute of it, whatever. So afterwards, you know, Frank goes to sit down and start watching the footage and listening to the, the playback and everything like that. And he's like, what happened to the drums? For whatever reason, the drum tracks were corrupt. And he's like, oh, what am I going to do now? I've got all this great footage. Everything else is perfect. And I got no drums. Or the drums, is something really wrong with the drums. So rather than scrapping the whole thing, I mean, how can you do that, right? After everything that went into it, Frank basically has spent the, the, next, the last eight, nine years working all sorts of magic painstakingly behind the scenes every day to fix the problem with the drums. And it took, like, all this time. So that's the reason why it has taken so long to get this thing out. And like I said, Frank, rather than scrap the whole thing, Frank was like, you know what? We have got to release this. As long as it takes to get this right, we've got to release it. So now, finally, it's done. Okay, and it's fantastic. So again, let me now that you got the story out of the way, and I'm sure Frank is probably like, now I can have my life back, right? And hopefully make some money on this, right? So the booklet, fantastic. All right, if you've seen the little unboxing over at uh, Jeff Young's Music Without Boundaries YouTube channel, all right. When I was with Jeff last week, we kind of showed you a little bit of this. It's fantastic. A lot of great information. A lot of great photographs from the vaults. I mean, this is just fantastic stuff, people. All right. If you are a Marino fan, you have got to own this. There's just no other way to say it. All right. And you got a, just a great kind of like piece at the end from Frank himself. So that's the booklet. All right. So you've got one package, okay, which has DVD, okay, DVD format. I believe there's four of them. Okay. And that's the song list, folks. Out of control. All right. And then you've got the Blu-ray, single Blu-ray, of course. This is the one I watched. Uh, I will tell you, if you're someone who's just been bummed out by, like, modern, you know, video recording and film techniques, uh, especially in concert, you know, videos where, you know, the camera cuts are like boom, 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 and you can't, they don't focus on anybody more than like a half a second, you know, the guitar player is soloing, and they're they're on the drummer, and you know, all that kind of stuff, this is perfectly done, man, it was a pleasure to watch, uh, the high definition quality was excellent, the camera work spectacular, the audio is spectacular, I mean, it, it was just spot on, spot on, I give this an A+, plus as far as production goes. Just really, really wonderful. <clears throat> and like I said, look at that set list. So there were three sets played on this evening. As you can see, each one, you know, set one and set two, about similar in length, but then you get you get the massive third set. So I will say, like I said, I watched this over a course of, I think, four viewings. All right? I watched the first set, set in all one session. I watched the second set, all one session. Uh, set three... I had to split into two just because it's so long. Um, and I will tell you, as, as, as great as set one and set two were, set three is mind-boggling, people. Mind, my jaw was on the floor. I mean, if Frank Marino isn't one of the greatest guitar players of all time, I, I don't know who, I, I mean, this guy, sh uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Unbelievable. So, you know, Set three kicks off with Poppy, which right there, what does that tell you? Ugh, great tune. And what else is great on here? Crossroads is killer. Killer rendition of Crossroads. Uh, Stories of a Hero. Amazing. All right. 
something's coming our way probably has the greatest well i don't even want to say the greatest because there's so many of them one of the highlight guitar solos on this collection is in that particular song uh he's calling also is great with a blistering solo what else is it strange universe so there's, there's like so many highlights here uh Electric Reflections of War and Aftermath is fantastic. In fact, the last basically whole, the last quarter of this is mostly just Frank. You know, Electric Reflections of War, Aftermath, O Little Town of Bethlehem, The World Anthem, Prayer for Peace, Try for Freedom and Amazing Grace. Ugh. You're just sitting there and you're watching. I'm like, this is like, this is one of the greatest guitar extravaganzas I've ever seen. All right, and it's not to it's not to to discount the first two sets because you know you got uh, you know in the set one you got Child of the Novelty, I'm Going Away, and then you know he plays a whole bunch of Hendrix tunes, Are You Experienced, Bold as Love, The Wind Cries Mary, Red House, then you get the answer, you know one of my probably my favorite Frank Marino tune, Dragonfly, set two you got Requiem for a Sinner, Strange Dreams which is killer, uh, God, for the Emperor. Midnight Highway. Just so many great tunes, people. So many great songs. I mean, ridiculous amount of tracks. Uh, and, and the band is fantastic. Um, just just a wonderful, wonderful release. Uh, let me see. Do I have any more information to give it? I mean, I think that's... You get the point. And, and granted, I know some of you are probably saying, but Pete... Where can I get it? How much does it cost? Well, you can buy it directly on Frank's site. That's where you can get it. Okay? Uh, I believe if you request it, he will even autograph it for you. I, I spazzed out and didn't request uh, an autograph, so I wish I did. But um, it's selling for $100 plus shipping. So it's not a cheap set. I will say this is probably the most money I've spent on a piece of like uh, music memorabilia or whatever you want to call it in a long time. But it was worth every penny. All right, hundred dollars, PayPal only. I think it was ten bucks to ship to me. It took about two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that. Uh, and you're not going to get through it in one night unless you got like nothing else to do, and it's like a Saturday, and you don't have a family or anything like that, or have absolutely nothing going on. You can just sit and watch blistering Frank Marino and his band for six hours, and, if, and that's probably the way to do it. I unfortunately didn't have that kind of time to dedicate at one sitting, but man. Holy cow. And, I, and and for those of you who are, you know, maybe not a Frank Marino fan or just not a big guitar fan, you know, this will probably be way too much guitar solos for you, okay? But if you're remotely interested in Frank Marino or if you're a big fan and you don't have this yet and you love kind of psychedelic, hard rock, bluesy music, poof, man. And the crazy thing is, he only like changes guitars like twice during this entire set. He plays like the first the first two sets played with that Gibson SG. Most of the third set played with it. He takes it off, he pulls out another like SG style guitar. I couldn't quite see which uh, which brand it was. And then he goes back to the Gibson again to finish it all off. So incredible when you see other like guitar players playing live who change guitars like, you know, every song practically. Uh, he just rips on his trusty Gibson SG throughout this entire thing. Uh, and man, he can play any style. Whether it's like kind of gentle, kind of jazzy stuff, or searing blues rock, or crushing hard rock, man, uh, or just wild psychedelia. Oh, God. You know, if you, if you thought that you've seen, and you know, and I saw Frank Marino in concert once at BB King Blues Club in New York City back in, uh, I'm going to say, right around this time that they recorded this. It was either 2009 or 10 or something like that. And I was just amazed at the guitar onslaught. I walked out of there and I was like, holy crap, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. That was nothing compared to what I just witnessed on this. Like I said, and it gets better and better. Each set is better than the next. And the third set is just mind-blowing. Frank, you are a genius. And I got to say, a hell of a singer too. I don't think Frank Marino gets enough credit, probably because everybody talks about his guitar playing, but Frank is a great singer. He's got a very unique voice. It totally fits the music. And he sounds exactly today like he did back in the 70s. And I'll tell you, his guitar playing has gotten even better. He relies less on effects, I think, these days than he did back in the 70s, which is totally cool. And I got to say, oh, and I forget which song. There's a, there's a tune late in set, in set three where he, it's like a bluesy tune. I forget exactly which one it was. I should have taken notes. Where he's playing licks... 
that sound like he's using a slide, but he's not. He's like he's like utilizing the vibrato arm on his SG to recreate slide noises. It's uncanny, people. I was like, I'm like, I was actually, I walked to the bathroom and, I, and the, the song comes on and I'm like, oh, he's ripping into a, he pulled out a slide, right? He's going to do some slide licks. And then I come out and I'm like, he's got no slide on his finger. He's got the vibrato arm in his hands and he's, and he's, it just, it's amazing. And it sounded just like a slide. Killer. Just unbelievable stuff. So anyway, get this at all costs. I know it's pricey, but it's well worth it. You'll be watching this for the rest of your life. Frank Marino, live at the Agora Theater. Wonderful performance. Uh, his bass player is killer. The drummer is amazing. His rhythm guitar player is quite good. And he's got a guest on violin that comes out on a couple tunes. Just amazing stuff. And Frank, this is a message to you directly. I know it took you forever to put this together, and I'm sure you put yourself through torture trying to get all the drum tracks straightened out and fixed. You did a fantastic job. If you never told that story, no one would know. All right, because this sounds perfect. You did a wonderful job, my friend, and uh, kudos to you. You're an inspiration. So go out and get this. Uh, visit us on the web at seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, of course. We're here on YouTube every day. There will be a full review of this on our webzine, seeatranquility.org, over the next couple days. So be on the lookout for that. But I wanted to kind of get the message out here right now. So remember, go to Frank Marino. Go to his website. Order up a copy. You won't regret it. And we'll see you guys real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.